Hello. In this playlist, we are going to introduce the concept of the spectrum and a spectral representation of signals. Now, it's still going to be conceptual. We are going to refine it in further playlists as we go over the continuous time Fourier transform, the discrete time Fourier transform, the digital Fourier transform, and the fast Fourier transform. But before we do that, let's start having some working definitions and some conceptual understanding of the key ideas that are going to be useful later on. So I'm going to start with a quick introduction, and then we're going to look at the spectrum of a sum of sinusoids, which is, should be quite easy, and these are periodic signals. So we are going to see things like the line spectra of these signals and the relationship between the frequency component. Then we'll add a little bit of compl complexity by looking at what is the spectrum when you start multiplying sinusoids. And that's useful, for instance, in amplitude modulation, which we are going to cover. We will then look in general, if you have any signal, non-sinusoidal, but at this periodic, do we have an analytical spectrum analyzer? And we'll come back, come up with the idea of the Fourier series. Do an example. Briefly go over the concept of frequency modulation and then introduce the idea of time frequency spectrum and spectrograms. Meaning, if you have signals whose frequency content changes over time, you need more than one dimension in order to look at what, what's going on with those frequencies. And so the tools of time frequency analysis and spectral analysis with spectrograms are going to allow us to actually look into those signals. Okay, so with that, talking about spectrum, what do I mean by spectrum? Can we start having a working definition of a spectrum? For our purposes, at this point, we can think of the spectrum as the frequency content. So the frequency content of a signal. OK. So let's start talking about this more mathematically. If we had a signal x of t, an arbitrary signal, and we wanted to decompose it into a sum of sinusoids. Let's imagine that we do something like this, a0, maybe there is an, the average of the signal, but then we're going to start adding, so sum, and let's use some cosines here, cosine of 2 pi, particular frequency, t, particular phase, and then k equals 1 to n. Okay, so we have a signal, and we're decomposing it into a sum of sinusoids of different amplitudes, frequencies, and phases. In that case, the sinusoids, this frequency content of the signal, will be the collection of amplitudes, oh, this is an AK, amplitudes, frequencies, and phases that enable us to express the signal in this form. Right? So if we have a signal and we are able to express it in this form, for which we know we need to know these amplitudes corresponding to this frequency, corresponding to this phase, we then know the frequency content of the signal or the spectrum. Now, the mathematics gets simplified when we start using complex exponentials. And so uh, using Euler's equation, e to the j theta equals cosine of theta plus j sine of theta, or 
if you recall last time that if we do g to the j minus j theta equals cosine of theta minus j sine of theta, if we add these two equations, e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta, we get 2 cos cosine of theta plus 0, or that the cosine of theta is equal to 1 half e to the j theta plus 1 half e to the minus j theta. We could express this co cosine as a sum of two sinusoids. So <clears throat> if we do that, in this case, we will have x of t equals, I'm going to change these a's with x0, plus the sum of 1 half e to the j I'm going to do this actually. <laughs> one half x of k, and that's a phasor, includes both the amplitude, this amplitude, and this phase. It's a complex number. e to the j 2 pi fkt plus one half xk e to the minus j. 2 pi fkt, k equals 1 to n. Okay, now this is a two-sided spectrum, two-sided spectrum, meaning if we have, this is a sinusoid will decompose into two rotating phases, which are complex exponential signals. And so if you were to look at, for instance, the spectrum of x of t, a cosine, a signal at a particular frequency, the spectrum, x, I'm going to denote this as x of j omega, or actually, let me not do that just yet. Let me just plot it. Spectrum, in this case, this is frequency in hertz, will have a spectral component of, at, at the frequency f of k and another spectral line at minus f of k. And that's why we call it the two-sided spectrum. <coughs> and this, the amplitude will be a over 2. Okay. You see that a simple cosine signal with a frequency fk decomposes the spectrum of that sinusoid is a spectral line at that frequency, positive frequency, and a spectral line at minus fk, and the amplitude is half of each one of those. Now, those are going to be complex conjugates in, in general. I'm going to know that with an asterisk here. And this equation that we have here, notice that we went 1 to n, and so we have to have both sides, but we can write it in a more compact form. That is typically how you're going to see it in general, that the, the signal, what we are trying to do, is be able to decompose it into a sum of sinusoids, and the simplest sinusoid that, that we saw was the complex exponential signal. So e to the, uh, I'm going to put it in j 2 pi fk t for k in general, if we are reconstructing or approximating, in general we could go from minus infinity to infinity. Right? You, you may need to add an infinite number of sinusoids to reconstruct something like, say, um, a square signal. But you can also approximate a signal. I'm going to say this is an approximation by a finite sum
two sides of the spectrum, k minus n to n. Before what I have here was effectively the best approximation that you could do for a signal into a finite sum of sinusoids, whether you express them as what we did here, as a sum of cosines, as the two-sided spectrum, and so we went from 1 to n, or if we go from minus n to n, basically we have a much more compact form for this expansion. And so in this case, our objective is going to be to find the AK components, which are complex numbers, the amplitude and the phases of the sinusoids of the particular frequencies here. So we know what we want to do is, giving a signal, be able to decompose it into sinusoidal signals and effectively be able to find for the different frequencies what will be the amplitude of those sinusoids, the complex amplitude, meaning we have both the amplitude and the phase of those sinusoids, so it's to synthesize it or to reconstruct it. Now, this is the problem of a spectral analysis, be able to find those AKs. So we need a spectrum analyzer, and there is the spectrum analyzer in hardware that will use the FFT, we will cover later. But if we have a signal that we are able to write an analytical expression for each, for which we have an X of T, we would love to go from X of T to those components, A, K, F of K, that if we put them into this equation, we get the signal back. So we want a mathematical spectrum analyzer. And we are going to see that in the next video. Thank you.